Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, November 15th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Jesse posted a quick diary uh, with a Python script that he actually uh, wrote to analyze some connect attempts uh, for his honeypot. Now, the connect HTTP method is uh, typically used by proxies in order to forward then requests to a different web service. And proxies are always sort of a hot target for these internet-wide scans that we typically see in our honeypots. Now, often they don't actually bother with the connect method. Many proxies, often called transparent proxies, will forward requests just based on the host name. But what Jesse saw is he saw a significant increase in the number of connect requests and summarized some of this activity. Now, uh, why are attackers looking for proxies? Some of it is sort of innocent in the sense that the attacker is just looking uh, for uh, some way to, for example, access a video platform that's blocked in their country. I see a lot of requests like that, for example, in our DShield data, but uh, at least one request that... uh, Jesse sort of pointed out in his diary was looking for a booter. A booter is uh, commonly referred to as a denial of service uh, platform. And of course, they sometimes uh, may need uh, proxies in order to hide the true identity of uh, their attacks. So a lot of the times it's what I would consider sort of lower level or low skilled attackers that are looking for proxies. But ever so often you may also run into an APT player or a more advanced attacker who is really just sort of building up a platform in order uh, to attack other networks from. It looks like there is one significant issue that uh, multiple users reported with this month's Microsoft update. Bleeping Computer has a good summary of it. And apparently the problem here is that a Kerberos sign-on is no longer working if you are using an on-premise active directory server. Of course, uh, the security around Active Directory, Kerberos and such uh, has been under active development by Microsoft and has been upgraded in recent patches. So no huge surprise here that uh, there are some issues with some of these changes. Appears to happen if you did enable the this account supports Kerberos AS256 or 128-bit encryption in the account options. Microsoft has acknowledged the problem as a part of its known issues with the November update, but at this point I haven't seen a solution for it yet. They're only saying that they're working on a resolution that should be released in the next few weeks. But keep watching that known issues page and I'll link to it in addition to the bleeping computer article for any updates in case you're affected by this problem. And researchers from CyberArk at Black Hat Middle East uh, released a talk that rediscovered the good old truth of web application that if I got your session cookie, I'm you no matter what authentication you used. And that, of course, now gains new importance with the wider spread use of multi-factor authentication. Not sure how effective uh, the idea here is that security software can do much against uh, the actual fact of stealing cookies. Of course, security software is often able to detect the malware that may be used uh, to accomplish uh, this cookie theft. But for any sort of machine in the middle attack and such, uh, of course, security software on the host isn't going to do too much uh, good. However, these cookies are often stolen by, for example, browser plugins, another uh, client-side attack that's certainly within the scope of any sort of endpoint uh, protection uh, software. From a web developer point of view, there isn't really a ton that you can do about it. Uh, Maybe uh, you can uh, change the session ID occasionally. Of course, enforcing idle timeouts uh, can be a good protection here. 
One method that doesn't really work well that I see often suggested is to check if a user's IP address changes. Well, well, sadly, uh, with the widespread use of Carrack rate NAT, in particular in mobile networks, uh, that tends to be uh, much more of a false positive problem than it's uh, worth it. So uh, usually it doesn't really work all that well. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.